Steve Mignante has rust in his veins. Known for his 20 years writing for Hot Rod and Carcraft magazines, and his 10 years of dispensing automotive knowledge on the Barrett Jackson auction block and his books, Rusted Muscle and 1001 Muscle Car Facts. Sit back, relax, and hang on as Steve takes you on a guided tour of America's best junkyards. This is the Junkyard Crawl. I'm Steve Mignanti, and this is the Junkyard Crawl. Today we're in Rhinebeck, New York at an all Mopar junkyard. Today we're going to show you a lot of cool Dodge and Plymouth cars. Now we're not going to mess around with slant sixes and 318 family cars. These are all performance models. We're going to see some 340s, 440s, six packs, but will we see a Hemi here in the junkyard? What a shock that would be. Well, we're going to find out. You have to stick around. Today it's all Mopars on the Junkyard Crawl. <laughs> Larry, when did you start collecting Mopars? Well, it was about 23 years ago. Uh, wife said I needed a hobby, so this is what I did. <laughs> and now, Larry, when it comes to your Mopar muscle cars, do you like them loaded with air conditioning, power steering, power windows, or stripped? Strip models, I love them. Manual transmission. Yeah, it's absolutely four speed, yeah. A drive in a good muscle car should be like a workout at the gym. Absolutely. <laughs> now, the cars that are here, are they mostly uh, things you bought running? Well, they're pretty much the way I bought them. You know, what you see is the way I got it. Everybody dreams of finding a Hemi car in the junkyard. Well, I just did it. This is a 1968 Coronet RT Street Hemi. Now keep in mind, there were 10,558 Coronet RTs built in 1968. The vast majority of them had the 440, a great engine, but 229 people stepped up to the 426 Street Hemi, a $900 upcharge. Of those 229 cars, nine were convertibles, 220 were hardtops, just like this. The only thing I'm seeing is somebody tried to cut a sunroof into this car at some point in time. It's not a convertible, people. But how do we really know it's a Hemi car? Follow me. This is a thing called the torque box. It's found on all street Hemis from 1966 to 1971. And what it is, it's a structural reinforcement for the bulkhead where the rear leaf springs of the car bolt to the frame and the chassis. Apparently the guys at the Chrysler Proving Grounds found that the street Hemi cars made so much torque, they were buckling the floor pan. So they reached into the convertible parts bin, pulled these cup-shaped supports out, and then they welded them to all street Hemi cars, again, from 1966 to 1971. To see them on this RT in the junkyard is shocking to me. A real Hemi car in the boneyard. Unbelievable. Okay, the Hemi is missing on this one. That's not uncommon. Over the years, these Hemi motors were robbed by drag racers, blown up on the drag strip. But the good news is, you can still get brand new Hemis in crates from Mopar Performance. So you could get the Hemi, plug it into this car, and make it correct once again. But I do see vestiges of its Hemi status in the 26 inch wide radiator core. These would have had a big three core radiator to keep that Hemi cool. Also see the Hemi torque flight still in place. It has five clutches up front, heavy duty piece still here. In addition to the torque boxes welded to the body of this coronet, we have the VIN. It's been riveted in place ever since day one, not been messed with, and it reads WS23J8A. The J in the fifth spot tells us this car was born a Hemi. These Hemi cars are still in junkyards. They really are. You just have to know what to look for. And now, Steve Mignante's factoids. <laughs> Coming up, see what Steve finds next.
This is something really cool. It's a 1970 Dodge Challenger RT. Keep in mind that Dodge didn't have a proper pony car in the Mustang Camaro tradition until 1970. This is the first appearance, and they really got it right because they could fit anything from the Slant 6 right on up to the 426 Street Hemi in this car's wide engine bay. This one here happens to be something really, really cool. The 383 Magnum was standard in RT. This one's a 446 pack engine, which was a $249 upcharge over the 383. What I love about this car is its original EK2 Go Man Go orange paint and the blacked out RT stripes work with the orange. It's just so cool. A muscular pumpkin if there was one. Now something really cool here I love is the original Scat Pack B. It's still present, faded away and gone, but there it is. All of the RT Dodges came with the Scat Pack B, which has actually been reintroduced in these last couple of years in the form of the new Dodge Charger and Challenger Scat Pack Edition cars with 6.4 liter Hemis. So everything old is new again. Something kind of uncommon inside this Challenger is the presence of the automatic transmission up on the shift column. Ordinarily, these cars had bucket seats, a console, and either a four-speed or the torque flight shifter here on the floor. Not so in this case. Now, we know this wasn't swapped in because the transmission tunnel doesn't have the brackets for the console. This car has been a column shift automatic since day one. And that's really bizarre because it's a 446 pack muscle car. Go figure. Now, of course, the original 446-pack engine is missing, but keep in mind, of the roughly 22,000 Challenger RTs built in 1970, only 1,640 customers paid the $249 to get the 446-pack with its three Holly two-barrel carburetors. Of course, that's long gone, but how do we know it's really a six-pack? Well, we go to the VIN. Here we see the letter V in the fifth spot telling us it was born with the 446-pack. Now, there's another little detail we can look at up here. Dodge stamped other VIN numbers into these vehicles. Here under the cowl plate is yet another VIN. This one matches this one. The suffix is 211243, 211243. So we know this car is an original six pack car. Automatic on the column, super rare. It needs to be saved. Won't somebody save this car? This 1969 Dodge Charger RT is one of 18,974 built. Considering that they built a total of 89,000 cars, these are pretty rare. But what really breaks my heart is seeing the white bumblebee stripe here fading away into oblivion. Keep in mind that one of the ad taglines for the RT cars was the cars with the bumblebee stripe. So when you saw the RT, it meant nothing less than a 440 under the hood. Now keep in mind, 1969 was also the year that the Charger 500 came out, but that had a very different flat rear wing window. This Charger has the flying buttress style rear window here with a sunken glass. And the funny thing is, for the 2015 model year, Dodge revived the Charger with sort of a, a rendition of this flying buttress. So everything old is new again. Inside most Chargers, you'll find bucket seats and a console shifter in the middle with an, either an automatic or a four-speed sticking out of the floor. Well, this one has something unusual. This has the column shifted torque flight automatic transmission. So this may have been a bench seat car, meaning that the original buyer maybe had a family, wanted to sit three across in the front. But this is one of about 19,000 real deal Charger RTs built. Now it is very rusty and pretty crusty, but it's rare, one of 19,000 built. Will it be saved? Who knows? Let's look under the hood. Well, look at this. The original 440 Magnum still sitting here with some of its traces of original orange paint on it. Now keep in mind that while GM muscle cars had a 400 cubic inch limit, Chrysler muscle cars, 440 cubes, another full 40 cubic inches over the others. Now this is the high performance version of the 440. We know that because we see the high upswept exhaust manifolds on this one. There's a 350 horse version of this engine, which was put in station wagons and police cars and stuff like that. But this is 375 horsepower, 480 foot-pounds of torque. And it breaks my heart to see the original intake manifold, the AVS carburetor's long gone. But again, here it is. All the raw material right here to restore this car is present. Will it happen or not? I don't know. It's pretty rusty, but at least the Dukes of Hazard didn't get a hold of this one. And now, another factoid.
Coming up, find out what's left of this 1972 Charger Rally. Nineteen seventy-two was a pivotal year for the Dodge Charger. As the muscle car era was winding down, the RT was dropped. Go figure. The Hemi was discontinued, and the party was just about over, except for one model, the Charger Rally. This is a great example. Now these had the domed hood from the seventy-one RT, but got an all-new door just for rallies in seventy-two. This is a one-year-only door. If you need one of these, good luck. Now, of course, the Rally in seventy-two no longer had any Hemi engines, but you could still get the four forty. This one is very special. This is a 444 barrel U-code car, but it's a four-speed. That means this one has the Dana 60 rear axle. Now, until a couple of years ago, there was a lot of controversy. A lot of folks thought because of the low compression in 1972, the Dana was no longer needed. They still put them in 444 speeds. This car is proof. Let's take a closer look. The greatest thing about Mopar muscle cars, Dodges and Plymouths, is that they always overbuilt the rear axle. I hate to say it, but the Chevy 12 bolt is a pretty delicate piece compared to the axles used under Chrysler's. But when it comes down to the four speed 440 cars, they always use this, the Dana 60 rear axle. Supplied to Chrysler by the Dana Spicer Corporation. Behind that stent tin cover is a nine and three quarter inch ring gear. The same size used under pickup trucks and even some army vehicles. Better than that, after 1970, the axle shafts were in increased to 35 spline diameter. That is one basically indestructible rear axle. And to see that under a 1972 Two Charger 440 with a four speed, unbelievable. That truly is capable of handling top fuel funny car horsepower. And yet, every 440 or Hemi four speed Mopar got that axle. It's overkill at its best. Here's a Junkyard Crawl pro tip. Always remember to check the trunk for junk. Sure enough, we see some goodies. We've got here the Pistol Grip 4-speed. This is factory original stuff on all Dodges and Plymouths 1970 through 74 with 4-speed transmissions. What a cool design that is. Also got the dual snorkel 444 barrel air cleaner. And this thing right here may look kind of nasty, but this is called a windage tray. All High performance 383 and 440 engines and Hemi's from 1968 on up got this thing. This goes between the crankshaft and the bottom of the oil pan to keep the oil from sloshing up onto the crank and dragging horsepower. This is worth five horsepower and it was installed by Dodge in all 440s. Check this out. This is a 1971 Dodge Charger RT, but better than that, it was originally sold by Mr. Norm's Grand Spalding Dodge in Chicago. Now, if you didn't know, Norm Krause, well, still alive as far as I know, a great dude, he and his brother set up a Dodge dealership around 1959, and they were one of the premier Dodge high-performance dealers of all time throughout the muscle car 60s and into the early 70s. This car was originally sold at Mr. Norm's. You might think of that as the Dodge equivalent of Nicky Chevrolet or Royal Pontiac for you GTO guys. Now, Mr. Norm sold hundreds and hundreds of Dodge muscle cars between 1959 and about 74. This is one of them. Now, this is a 71, totally redesigned from the 1970 and 68 type Dodge Chargers more of a fuselage style. Sadly, the public did not really appreciate these. 1970 Charger RT sales were about 9,000 units. By contrast, they tumbled to 2,659 for 1971. But this is one of them. The rarity makes it even cooler and more special. Let's look under the hood. As with all Charger RTs since the 1968 model year, we do see the 440 standard engine. There was also a 440 six-pack option and a street Hemi option. We don't see those here. This is the original four-barrel 440 engine. Lots of torque, and I'm loving how I see traces of the original bright blue poly paint under the hood. There's hope for this car yet. As a Mr. Norm's piece, it has to be restored. It's got to be saved. The 
1971 Charger restyle was very thorough. For the first time ever, the RT model got its own door skin. While standard Chargers had a smooth door, the RTs had these sort of pseudo gills. And of course, the RT graphics with the blacked out stickers coming down the side of the car, very cool, very menacing, and all original on this car. The one graphic on this car that really sets it apart is this, the Mr. Norm sticker. Been there since 1971. But inside of the car is something very cool. Okay, the inside of this Charger is a mess. A lot of loose parts, but here's the original four-speed drive shaft. There's the four-speed transmission tunnel. Good to see that. The VIN is present. Everything's right. But there's also a very cool piece of paper that verifies the Mr. Norm story. It's an actual bill of sale. It shows here that in 1971, in fact, March 15th of 71, a turquoise 69 Super B was traded in on this car. The seller got $1,700 credit for the Super B and bought this car for $4,302.90. The fact that this is a Mr. Norm sold car sets it apart from all the other charges on Earth. It's got to be saved. It really does. Now, it just goes to show you never know what treasures you're going to find in the junkyard. You just have to keep your eyes open. And now, another factoid. Coming up, see what Steve finds next. Are there any plans to restore any of these cars and keep it, or are they all for sale? Uh, everything's for sale. If something for some reason doesn't sell, I'll uh, wind up keeping it and eventually have it restored. So. If you had your way, which car would it be? At this point, I believe it'd be the 71. Charger RT, Citron Yellow, six-pack car, 198, uh, Mr. Norms. Ever been to Mr. Norms in Chicago? Ever go there? No, I've never been there, no. You know, here he's still doing some production stuff, right? There are a line of uh, Mr. Norms brand new Chargers and Challengers and even the pickup trucks they're doing now. Good things never die. Yes, that's for sure. On the next episode of Steve Mignante's Junkyard Crawl, Well, today we're in upstate New York with a horde of roadrunners. Nothing but roadrunners. 440s, 4 speeds, Dana, 68, 69, 70s, all kinds of cool stuff. If you want to miss it, we're going to dig them up right now. Beep, beep, stick around. <laughs>